joke of the Chuck Show. He's about to show you how to grow. He's about to show you how to grow. Welcome to Chuck Show. He's about to show you how to grow. Whoa. Whoa. Welcome to Chuck Show. He's about to show you how to grow. Welcome to Chuck Show. He's about to show you how to grow. Hola, my friends. I hope all is fine and well with you and yours. Hey, I know we spend a lot of our time in the backyard psyching hot, talking hydroponics and aquaponics, and that's great. But I want to show you what the true inspiration that holds me dear to my heart when it comes to gardening every single day, and that's traditional gardening. I'm a firm believer that color and sound are great inspirations, especially if you're having a bad day, and especially if you're having a bad day and you want to turn it into a good day, and nothing does that better than nature. And I'm just going to show you a few tips on how to bring a little bit more of that natural sound and that natural color, and those natural critters, those beautiful natural animals, to your yard. So if you have a few minutes, hang out with us. Check it out. Now, of course, my friends, as you've heard me mention many times before, a little bit of color goes a long way in your yard. Not only does it brighten up the features of your property, but it also brightens up your day. Man, I, as a veteran, as a disabled veteran, I can't tell you how much joy and how much beauty and how much pleasure just being around beautiful plants brings to my life every day. For instance, these beautiful pentas right here, they do amazing in the desert. They don't take a lot of water. I'll give you a little bit of advice about them, though. They love a lot of full, early in the day sunshine, but they do prefer some nice shade cover coming towards the evening. Now, especially being out here in the desert, it gets a little bit hotter in the later afternoon, unlike a lot of places across the continental U.S., so please keep that in mind. If you really want to get the best out of your pentas, remember, it's all about the sun. Right here, this is our three-year-old Mexican bird of paradise. Many of you were actually around when this guy first came into our family. Originally, it was planted in the ground at our old property, but we figured since we were moving, let's bring our guys with us. They're as much as, fam they're as, much family as our kids are, aren't they? One of the main things I love about the bird of paradise is that it's so easy to take care of. We like the water from the bottom of the tray. Sometimes we'll give a little bit of moisture up on top, especially if we know it's going to be a hot day. But like many of the other plants that we have in our gardens, the plants, they communicate. They tell us if they're thirsty. They tell us if they're hungry. It's incredible what you can learn if you just take a moment and listen when they talk to you goes without saying in the time and day in a day and age where we need to be raising as many pollinating plants as possible to bring back the bees my friends and the other pollinators this bird of paradise it really does its thing we can sit there all day and from the camera even from the front porch to stoop in front of the house we'll see all types of bees and hummingbirds come through we have quite a variety in the southwestern united states what type of hummingbirds do you guys have where you're at i'd love to hear about it please share this is larry lantana and he's actually seen better days. Um, our temperature spiked in the last few days because we do have our monsoon coming in. So the weather's been kind of finicky. So we're gonna give Frankie a little bit of trim and we're gonna see what he's gonna do for us in the upcoming weeks and months. We already know he's gonna do great because look at all of this beautiful new growth coming in right here. Right now, Frankie's just chilling. Um, Frankie was actually cut down to about six inches tall. Um, maybe up to like two months ago when we first moved to the new property. So this is all new growth. Frankie's just trying to figure it out. So we'll see how this works out. Stay tuned. Over here we have our hibiscus and our hibiscus is one of our most proliferative attractants for pollinators in our entire garden, which I think is cool. Um, I'll be in the main um, um, picture windows in the morning having my coffee or having my tea with my wonderful wife Rose and we'll just sit there in amazement at the different number and variety of hummingbirds that'll actually come through the number of um, beautiful colored plants that we have in our garden. And a hibiscus is always at the top of the show. They check this out. Hummingbirds are attracted to the colors red, although, although, do not put food coloring in your hummingbird um, nectar food if you be make it at home because that is poison. Don't poison them. Basic sugar water combination always does the trick. Um, even while I'm talking to you, you may see some birds show up at the empty feeder behind me because I do encourage a, a, a togetherness, a sense of togetherness, along with the plant and animal wildlife in, on our property. I am going to take a second. I'm going to fill up that feeder. So if you guys want to hang out with me, you can. Let's take, take it to look at into my daily life. Let's go.
Now, usually I put around four cups in a feeder when I do fill it up. For the most part, I'll fill it up one time a day, once a day. Now, I'll fill it, I filled it up late yesterday evening because I was really enjoying the birds while I, they were out here doing their thing. Plus, we had expected some late night rain, which we didn't get it. We got a few sprinkles, but still in all well. It's about two cups in each one of these plastic cups right here. So I'm not even going to give it full all the way up because eventually I will. Let's go. There you go. Not sure if you can hear in the background, but they are actually anticipating, they're watching me do this, and it's the coolest thing that they're acknowledging what's about to happen. They're like, come on, Chuck, hook us up. And I'm like, I got you guys covered. All right, let's go. Not only will you see us encouraged to um, the um, wildlife to come closer with just the flowers, we also use a variety of feeders. Each one of our feeders um, is specifically set up to host a different type of animal. For instance, these are for our birds, typical bird food. Um, birds come over here, the smaller birds, the songbirds that come over here and knock it down. Even some of the um, doves, the white, the white um, wing tip glove, the white wing glove doves, as well as the morning doves come over here and they feed as well. Over here we have our primary suet feeder. This is specifically built and um, set up for woodpeckers. Unlike many other nut feeding animals or um, wildlife or birds, woodpeckers like to feed hanging upside down, which is why the food on the suet feeder is actually um, placed in a net holder underneath the hanging canopy. While setting up any type of bird feeder, please be aware of your surroundings. For instance, I'm zoomed in right now. But right there in the center of the camera, in the center of the screen, that is a hummingbird nest. How beautiful is that? And I happen to notice it because I've taken the time to look at the canopies of these trees because if you have a nice environment that's welcoming to the birds, they're actually going to build their homes around. Now, how cool is that? You can have lifetime neighbors if possible. It doesn't take a large area, it doesn't take a lot of space. It just takes a want, a want to share your property, a want to share the love of nature with the natural animals, with the animals that are naturally around you. This isn't just your home, this is their home too. I love being able to do this in the gorgeous southwestern United States. Um, pardon me, you actually get a little bit of a behind the scenes shot in here too. You can see the tripod that we're using to film some of the actual content that we're making today. Also, look at how friendly the birds are, how quickly they came back to the feeders. They're not intimidated by me. They know that this is a safe place. They know that this is a great space. It's a cool space for them to hang out. They can get food. They can get water. It's all about living in peace and harmony with the nature around us. As a disabled veteran, this means so much to me just to see beauty in the world because it's the exact opposite of what a lot of us saw out there in the world. I'm telling you, you can have that beauty right in front of your house. Get together with other veterans, make it happen. Do it as a family, make it happen. There's no better feeling than doing this as a family. Trust me, my friends. This was so smooth, I mean, so cute and so awesome when, we, when I set this up yesterday. This is um, Hummingbird Feeder. And once again, we make our own hummingbird solution, sugar and water. And um, like within five minutes of setting this up, we already had our first hummingbird visitor. And I was so happy, I was all cheesy. And it's the same hummingbird. I thought it was the same hummingbird that comes by all the time, but it's actually part of a group of hummingbirds right there up in the tree. That's where that hummingbird's nest is that I just showed you guys. And they take turns coming to the feeder. Some of them take watch, some of them take turns. And you can actually hear the difference in the hummingbird calls from the sparrows and from the finches. It's incredible when you hear this just cacophony of just amazing sounds and it's just melodic music of nature. And I'm so privileged and I'm so happy that I get to be a part of this every single day. Even when it comes to my succulents. These guys are born and built for the desert, way more than I am. And I love giving them a little home, right, especially in front of the house. I assure you, this camera and the recording, um, this doesn't do it any justice. If you could just hear the beautiful music of nature that's being sang around me at all times. Um, I wholeheartedly encourage you, even if you're not a disabled veteran, just as a father, just as a 
a person just get out there get to growing get to gardening get to know get to know your local animals get to know your local wildlife I was having my coffee and my bagel this morning and I look out and right there at the bird bath the one that's in the ground a beautiful beautiful jackrabbit just coming over here to take a sip and I see this guy every single day well hopefully I'll continue to see him every single day because chances are if I see him the hawk probably sees him too <gasps> and if you're going to give yourself a visual treat why not give yourself a nice little audio one as well especially out here in the southwest the breeze hits the wind chimes you get the gorgeous gorgeous mountain view right outside the front window you get the beautiful beautiful colorations of flowers all of these flowers, not those specifically, but the bee in the desert, but all of them desert strong, all of them desert hardy. So you really want to get some plants, pick some plants that are built to grow in the desert. And, you know, so there's just a better chance for them to survive and a better chance for you to be able to enjoy them. And I also always, always tell my friends, especially when they come over here, or even the visitors that walk by, look closely because you'll be shocked at the attention that we put into the detail out here. For instance, check this out. We have our own little fairy paradise. We have our own little wonderland in a tree. How are you doing, Princess? How are you? How beautiful is your day today? Hey, Mr. Frogs, how are you guys doing? Seems we've discovered the front door. We have some more company down there. Hey, little birdie. Hey. We don't have anyone in a window today, but I hope they take, out, take some time to come out and visit us today. What are you thinking about, little buddy, over there? You're going to take some time off your stoop and jump down on a swing? Do be very, very careful. <laughs> you guys see what I did right there? <laughs> I'm never going to grow up. <laughs> I swear to you guys, I have so much fun out here. And just making it part of my morning ritual to come out here to rinse out and to fill the feeders, to feed and to water the plants to make sure that the um, birds are all taken care of. Even to check in on my little tiny friends in their little wonderland paradise over there. Every day is magical. Every day is amazing. And I'm telling you, you guys can have the same. You can do the same. It's not a lot of space. It's not even a lot of plants. But I'm not making it fun. These plants are making it fun for all of us. So get on board. Get on board, my friends. So whether it's large scale, whether it's small scale, whether you're doing it by yourself, whether you're doing it with your family, I encourage you to get out there and get to gardening. I encourage you to get out there, plant some plants that bring in the natural wildlife. You'd be shocked at what you see. I told you before, we see everything from hares to jackrabbits, um, every kind of bird that you could think of that would possibly visit this area. We have a family of hawks that visit every day. Our bird friends are our friends. The rabbit friends are our friends. I encourage you guys to get out there, plant that first seed so that together we grow. And if you're a veteran out there, please don't be afraid to get some help. We're out there and we're here for each other. United we stand forever. Plant that first seed, together we'll grow. Peace and blessings, my friends.